Hello, my friends. Today, I want to talk to you about a somewhat disturbing video that I watched today. It was a lecture given by Elizabeth Loftus. has spent her life researching at major universities and research institutions um, about false memories and how false memories can be implanted at will or how there are certain ways in which genuine memories can be manipulated and I find it fascinating because she speaks about false memories in very glowing terms. She refers to it not as, you know, brainwashing or, uh, uh, you know, mind manipulation or deceit. She doesn't call it those things. She calls it a mind technology. Well, along with this ability to plant memories and control behavior, obviously comes some important ethical issues. Like, when should we use this mind technology? And she's really excited about the potential applications of this mind technology. She starts off the lecture, you know, benign enough, I suppose, um, and she talks about this study of how a certain group of individuals were made to watch a video of a car crash, a car collision. And for half the individuals, they're asked um, about what happened when the two cars hit, and they use the word hit, whereas the other half were asked about what happened when the two cars smashed into each other. And just that difference between using the verb hit versus the verb smash, the people who were asked about the cars smashing into each other consistently uh, estimated the speed that the cars were traveling to be higher. And they also imagined that there was broken glass when there really was no broken glass. Whereas the participants that were asked about the cars hitting each other, hitting being, you know, a less, I guess, a less uh, extreme word, um, they did not report broken glass and they reported the speed of the cars being lower than the other group. So this kind of shows that the way in which we recall memories can be manipulated and that by you know applying concepts and bringing in some kind of external information I think that's the way they put it you can manipulate the way that somebody recalls a memory and this is she says because memory is not like a recorder it's not like this phone that I'm using to record myself right now it doesn't just imprint information onto some kind of sheet or blank slate and that imprint stays there. It's more like an active process of reconstructing. And so because of this, it's possible not only to um, manipulate the memories that somebody actually has, but to implant entirely new memories. But we and other investigators have planted rich false memories of things that were much more unusual and much more stressful. So in a study done in Tennessee, researchers planted the false memory that when you were a kid you nearly drowned and had to be rescued by a lifeguard. And in a study done in Canada, researchers planted the false memory that when you were a kid something as awful as being attacked by a vicious animal happened to you, succeeding with about half of their subjects. And in a study done in Italy, researchers planted the false memory, when you were a kid, you witnessed demonic possession. 
I do want to add that it might seem like we are traumatizing these experimental subjects in the name of science, but our studies have gone through thorough evaluation by research ethics boards that have made the decision uh, that the temporary discomfort that some of these subjects might experience in these studies is outweighed by the importance of this problem for understanding memory processes. And like I said, she was very excited about this possibility. Um, she brought up, for example, the, the very innocuous sounding application of she says, imagine if you're the parent of uh, an obese child, you can implant false memories that would help them lose weight. Such as, you know, implanting, she, she actually cites other studies where they implanted false memories into people where during childhood they had a bad experience eating a certain type of food like strawberry ice cream or whatever. And later on they were tested and they avoided that food because of this false memory that they implanted of like getting really sick when they ate a bunch of strawberry ice cream. And she says that these effects are persistent. They can stay for years afterwards. And she's like, well, what, w what would you rather want? You know, what's worse? Implanting a false memory, just one little false memory uh, or having an obese child, you know, like just think of think of all the, the potential for these great applications. When I got back to my work, I asked this question. If I plant a false memory in your mind, does it have repercussions? Does it affect your later thoughts, your later behaviors? Our first study planted a false memory that you got sick as a child, eating certain foods, hard boiled eggs, dill pickles, strawberry ice cream, and we found that once we planted this false memory, people didn't want to eat the foods as much at an outdoor picnic. The false memories aren't necessarily bad or unpleasant. If we planted a warm, fuzzy memory involving a healthy food like asparagus, we could get people to want to eat asparagus more. And so what these studies are showing is that you can plant false memories and they have repercussions that affect behavior long after the memories take hold. So basically, it seems like, you know, they're just talking openly about uh, essentially like what sounds to me like MKUltra type programming on people and openly stating that they're excited about the possible applications of, of deceiving people, of implanting false memories. Because, you know, if, if it's justified to, for them in their mind, if it's justified to deceive somebody uh, because they're obese, if it's justified to deceive somebody into, into becoming healthy or losing weight, then think of all the other things that these uh, liberal Marxists would in their heads justify as being worth deceiving somebody for. And think of all the times that this has probably already happened. I mean, when I, when I think of um, um, how often children are taught to, quote, remember the Holocaust, or how all of these uh, events, like school shootings, are plastered all over the media, and there's conspiracy theories surrounding these, and people think to themselves, well, how could they, how could they, you know, really execute a conspiracy like this? How could they be so evil or deceitful? Why would anyone go along with this? It would take so many people to keep their mouths shut. It would, it would require so many people to be a part of the conspiracy and they just can't imagine why anyone would lie about such a thing. Why would anyone lie about a school shooting? Why would anyone lie about six million Jews being killed by the Nazis? Why would anyone lie about these things? Well, if you believe that this lie is going to have uh, worthy consequences, consequences that are worth the deceit, 
such as, in the case of the Holocaust, removing nationalist feelings, making nationalist feelings taboo, and a, a in-group preference among white Europeans taboo. <laughs> and especially making the criticism of the Jews taboo, then the deceit would be sort of... There, there's a way in which these people can justify it to themselves and think that what they're doing is good. Same with the school shootings. If you think that by, by staging a school shooting, you'd be ultimately saving lives because in the bigger picture, you know, if you turn... If, if this staged event turns the American public against... Uh, the right to own assault rifles, you know, and if, if, if this convinces the public to enact more common sense gun control measures, then it's sort of understandable that, you know, you know, I'm sure they could find thousands of people who could be convinced by that sort of reasoning. It's not that hard. And add on top of that, you you pay the people a bunch of money, and not only do they feel morally justified for what they did, staging an event like that, but they're also financially compensated. It's not that difficult. And so when you when I hear people like Elizabeth Loftus speaking openly, I think it was at a TED talk speaking openly about how there's so many great applications for implanting false memories in people. It really gives you a glimpse into how the elites think. And it's kind of disturbing. Thank you for watching. Well, along with this ability to plant memories and control behavior, obviously comes some important ethical issues. Like when should we use this mind technology? And control behavior, obviously.